Hi, I'm Myra Ferguson for Ajar Productions, and in this video I'd like to show you a few options for customizing the appearance of N5's back and next arrows that you can add when you export your InDesign layout with N5. Although these customizations use CSS, let me assure you that you don't really need to know anything about CSS to use them. If you can copy and paste, then you're all set. Here are some examples. Let's start with the default back and next arrows. In this version, the back and next arrows have been moved up. Here, they're in their regular position, but scaled down. Here, they're regular size, but use a blend mode to blend into the background. And here, they're inverted so that they show up better. Let's jump over to InDesign and take a look at how to customize these. Here's the document with just a few pages. The back and next arrows get added when we export. Since it's already saved, let's go to N5, Export HTML5 with N5. In the basic section of the export dialog, you'll see that the back and next arrows are enabled to appear by default with some page formats. To change the appearance of the back and next arrows, I'll need to head over to the Resources section. The Resources section is where I can add either CSS or JavaScript to modify the output. To change the appearance of the back and next arrows, I'll be adding CSS. To change the position of the arrows, I'll copy the CSS that I want to use. We'll add all the CSS that I'm using to this video's description for you to use too. Next to the CSS portion in the Resources section, I'll click the plus button to add the CSS. Because I've already copied the CSS to my clipboard, I'll click Paste Code for N5 to automatically add it from my clipboard. Once it's pasted, you can make modifications such as the percentage where you'd like the buttons to appear. For example, 10% would be near the top of the screen, 90% would be near the bottom. Then I'll click Save and Apply. If I click to append the CSS, N5 will add this code to the end of the pages.css file. Otherwise, N5 will create an additional CSS file using the name of the resource. And I'll click OK to export. Let's take a look. And here's the arrow near the top. Let's add code to change the size of the arrows. Currently, N5 has kept the resource with the CSS to change the position of the arrows. I can add another CSS resource that I'll copy to change the scale by clicking the plus button. Notice that N5 automatically gives it the same name as the other resource. If I'd like to keep both resources, I'll give this CSS a new name and save it. If I don't want to keep the original resource, I can select it and click the minus button to delete it. And let's export. And look how cute that tiny arrow is! For the next one, let's add CSS to apply the Multiply Blend Mode. Another way to replace a CSS resource is to double click on the name of the resource. Because I've already copied this next CSS snippet, I'll select Paste Code, Save and Apply, and click OK to export. Now the arrow has the blend mode applied. You can see the white circle is gone, but you can really see the effect of the blend mode when the browser is resized and the arrow appears over the content. And here's one more. Instead of adding a blend mode, let's add CSS to invert the arrows. You can also change the amount of the inversion by changing the value in the parentheses. Zero would be no inversion, and one is fully inverted. So you could make it anywhere in between. Let's keep the inversion at 1. I'll save the resource and click OK to export. Here you can see that the color of the arrows have been inverted. These are just a few of the ways that you can customize the back and next arrows when you export your InDesign layout within 5. Let us know in the comments how you're customizing your back and next arrows. Thanks for watching! If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and be sure to check out N5 at n5.us. Thanks so much for watching.